Now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be installing Windows Server 2003. We're going to be using it to host our DHCP server, which will be issuing IP address to computers that are part of our, our, of our network. Now currently, if you notice, like uh, Toivo currently has a switch, which about five people are connected using their um, ROG45 uh, connectors and their uh, twisted pair cables. I also have a switch here, uh, though it's a wireless router, but we are using it as a switch to connect other computers here. So what we're going to be doing is simple. We're going to install Server 2003 since Windows Server is part of a network operating system. We're going to install the features called DACP Server. We're going to use that DACP Server to issue IP addresses to all the computers connected on the network. And we'll be able to manage it from here. Just like the way the wireless router was issuing IP address when we were connecting to it. So I've already added my image, if you notice here, and that's my hard drive. So I'm going to start up my virtual machine of Server 2003. So it's coming up. So I'm going to make the device uh, bi-directional so that I can be able to move in between the computer system at will. Oh, sorry. So, okay, that's it. So I'll press enter. I'll press F8 to agree. I'll take the default partition. I'll format with NTFS quick. And that's it. Please. I want, listen, can you just pay attention and look at what I am doing? Leave any questions for now. You can ask all questions later. Uh, can you, does it allow you to skip the, the key? Yes, that's what I'm asking. Uh, try, try to skip it, let's see. Yes, okay, uh, just a minute, I'll get you the key now. Can we please have one class? Just watch what they are doing, except you won't get anything from what we've done today. I'll try to see if I can upload the videos later on. I did that for my student uh, yesterday. I'll upload the videos for you. So just watch as it's installing. It's not going to take long. So you know how, how long it took me to install it. So I'll just leave it to go on. No more memory, no more memory. Just pay attention to what is happening. Make sure your computer is ready so that when the server is set up, you are ready to, to follow up. No. Now, after I've done this installation, those of you who don't have a copy of the Server 2003, try to get the copy before we leave today. Try to copy it to your computer. Uh, the next time we're coming, we're going to be running it on the computer system. Huh? The next time we come, we're going to be doing, we're going to be using the virtual machine as our router then, as our switch, sorry, instead of using the physical switch. Uh, just a minute. I'm coming with this, with the uh, with with the key. Uh, server 2003 standard edition. Okay, it's um, the key. It's H eight X Q nine D F D Three three M for man J six four K K Kelvin two G X D X eight B R seven D 
D. You think you should go now? So click next. Yeah, you can snap the key as well because some of you will need that key to install. I'm not too sure whether to activate multiple computers, but at least. Um, that's the key. Can't be wrong. I it was H, eight, X, Q, nine, D, F, D. Three three M J six four K two G X D X eight B R seven D It's our rabbit. <laughs> Oh, just a minute. Just a minute. Try this. Did it go through? Okay, try this. Try this. No, no. This is another one. I think what I gave you was for the 32 bits, not the 64. It's um, B from the beginning. It's B, 2, 9, Q, R, Q, nine, Y, yes, Y, youth, C, queen, yeah, eight, V, M, four, B, yeah, Barbara, T, H, Four B T H six W B J B Q sorry, sorry, not Q J G sorry. Yes, it's J B G W Q. If you are not fine, then something is wrong. Because that's the standard for 64 bits. Yeah, to go through. Just skip any default. Anything you can answer, just accept the default. Then it will go through. One class, one class. Watch what we are doing. It's very serious. Uh, hopefully, I'll have this video online. You can also use this with your own private computer as well, with the virtual machine, by making all the network adapters internal. Then, this computer will not be able to issue IP addresses to all the client computer. I'll put uh, my organization. MCT Okay Yes Now, uh, those of you who do not understand this, this is actually called license mode. Normally, when I was explaining the Windows, the network operating system to you of a server, I told you that when users connect to the server, every, each user actually have its own desktop. Is that not correct? Now, this is the license that actually allows them to connect simultaneously. We'll call it the license mode. I will call it, this is used for terminal services. If you notice, you can license it per server or per user. Now, per server, per, per server or per computer, per server is if you're using different servers. 
that are participating within your network. The second option is either per device or the license, instead of the license to go to the users on the first option, which is per server, it goes to the server. So the server connects the users. Now, the second option says per device or per user. So if your company has its own desktop, they now give the licenses to the desktop. But if they have users, they give the licenses to the users. So when I'm using my personal computer or the company's computer, I will still be able to connect to the server. Then I will be able to have my own personal desktop. That's what this license mode is. Excuse me? Is, is it 32 bit you install? Yes. Okay, it's um, H, mm -hmm. 8, mm -hmm. X, mm -hmm. Q, mm -hmm. 9, mm -hmm. D, mm -hmm. F, mm -hmm. D, mm -hmm. double 3, N, J, 6, 4, K, K, Kevin. It's M J six four K. It's M M for man. Mike, yeah, or Mike. K two. I, is it 64 bit key I'm reading for you? No, 32. Yeah, 32 bit, okay, yeah. Then after the K, it's 2 J, G X D X 8 B R 7 D. From where? Uh, from is D F D three three M J six four K K Kelvin K then two G for girl X D X eight B R seven D <laughs> one class, one class. Let's have this done before we leave today, please. We need to finish this, then we can go home. This is really very important. Okay, we're almost installing. My Windows is now installing to still registering components. It's almost done. So after we've finished installing, we're going to be setting up a DSCP server. And I want each, of, each and every one of you to pay attention. Then after the server has been set up, those of you who are connected on the switch, all you do, you just reset your network. And automatically, the server will issue you guys an IP address. You'll see now, I'll be able to issue your computer and IP address. Your host computer. Patient, patient, so that you can know at least they are, how long it took us to finish the installation. Uh, use the use no 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 use use the virtual machine control or delete not your computer. Don't use the combination on your keyboard. Use the one on the virtual machine. Uh, did you is it full screen? Then you go to the file, you will see control or delete there. On the menu. No 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 not on the virtual machine itself on your computer, the virtual machine running on your computer, make it a full screen, then you, the menu bar will come up. 
No, no, not you. You are still actually on the virtual machine manager, not the manager. The virtual machine itself. Yeah. Look for the menu. There's a menu. Menu. Yeah. Yeah. Click on those menu there. It will bring up the drop down list. Okay, let me maximize my screen. Let me show you what's... Toivo, can you see the menu here? You see machine here. Do you see machine? Then you see control or delete. Yeah. Yeah, you see the menu, you see machine, you see control or delete. Because um, when you want to log into the server, by default, it uses the control or delete key. Yeah, when you want to log into the server. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a center of administration. It's used to administer. You'll notice, those of you who are not familiar with server 2003, you'll notice server 2003 kind of installation it's peculiar with windows xp huh? because when server 2003 was released then xp was still the based operating system as at then the client operating system are you getting me when windows 7 was introduced server 2008 was introduced the installation was also more or less alike the way they boot the same way with windows 8 server 2012 they also have the same alike manner the way they boot and the installation I don't know, don't update anything. Just skip that. Because you don't have internet. Yes. Of course, it will take you to the desktop. Then you wait for, you wait for my computer to load up. Then you see how we're going to go through the installation. So, uh, this is the same server you run, DNS. It's also the same server you run Active Directory. It's also the same server you also run, uh, what do you call it? Um, network routing and, remember I talked about routing and remote access. Do you guys remember that? Now, if I was going to use this server as a router as well, I will now install the routing and remote access. So then I will need my telecom public IP address. So at the end, I will need to make sure this server has two network interface card. One card goes to telecom, the other card goes to the switch. So the users will be sharing the switch. When they go to Google, it gets to the server. The server then acts as the router, routes it through telecom, to, it, then it goes out to the internet. So when you see a system administrator, that is exactly what they do. That is exactly what they do. So those of you who want to do server, uh, server administration courses later on, those are things you'll be learning. Uh, quite interesting. I'm almost finalizing. Just uh, give me some few minutes to be finished now. Then we'll go with our configuration. Yeah, it's quite taking some time. But please, let's finish this before we leave today. Well, I'm recording it. If you want to go, it's fine. I'm recording it. I'll put it on YouTube, then I'll send the link to you guys on the, on the e-learning communication. You'll get the link as well. Yes. But next week, Monday, you can come and get the, the soft copy. Why is the light on? Huh? Because I want you guys to see what I'm doing on my screen.
Okay, I'm almost done. Just give me some few minutes. Make sure those of you having two servers, you're not on the same um, switch, eh? you'll be conflicting the network. I uh, hope two servers are not running on the same switch. Because if two servers are being installed on the same switch, you guys will be conflicting each other. Yeah, but if, if, you have inst if you're installing it, make sure then you use it only on your virtual machine. Only one server should run on a network. Remember, we explained that before. A DHCP server, can only work, there can only be one. Huh? It's just that in server 2012, Microsoft brought up a new feature called uh, a DHCP uh, a load balancing, whereby you can have multiple DHCP running on the same switch, but they are actually acting as a helper to the, to the main. So when we we'll, we'll put 50% on the main, we'll put another 50% on the secondary. So when the 50%, when the first server system has used up its IP address, the next server starts assigning. Are we together? Or for some reason, another feature Microsoft also included was called DACP failover. If one of the servers fails, let's say the main server stops, the DACP services stops running, the server two will now start assigning IP addresses. Those are scenarios uh, I, I know uh, that is up to date on how two DSCP servers can run on the same network. But apart from that, uh, you can't allow two DSCP servers because then your client will be getting IP addresses from two different computer systems. So that's why only one has to run. Okay, guys, um, I'm there now. So I'm going to put Ctrl or Delete. I'm going to press Enter. Okay, I didn't put a password. Okay, my screen is coming up now. Okay, guys. Um, that is a Windows Server 2012. Uh, it wants me to update and all that. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip all that. I'm not going to update, so I'm just going to click on Finish. I'll say yes. Actually, this is called the Server Manager menu. We we'll actually call it Server Manager in Server 2008 and also 2012. But in 2003, they call it manage your server. Okay. Now, I don't want to waste our time. What I'm actually going to be doing on this server system is to install uh, the server row for the Windows. Now, if you go to the start menu, please, can you do what I'm doing? Those of you running the server. No, 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 I just minimized it. You see, I just minimized. If you go to the start menu, of course, if you go to the control panel and you see network connections, then you see local area connections, right? And you click on it. You see your local area connection card. Did you see there? Now, if you come to support, you'll notice it's actually using a default IP address. It says assigned by DACP server. Huh? Okay, if I go to uh, details, it shows me the DACP server that is actually assigning this IP address. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the properties. Sorry. Uh, IP, TCP IP. Okay, it's obtaining IP address automatically. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign an IP address. You see, the computer which is hosting the DSCP server has to be a static IP address. Yeah, yeah. Your main server has to have a static IP address, not a dynamic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, use the following IP address. And I'm going to type 192.168.1.1. I'll accept the default. I'm not going to put a default gateway because I'm not actually running an internet server. Are we together? So I want my, I want this server to also act as a DNS as well. So what I will come now, I will come to preferred DNS server. I will type 192.168.1.1. Then I'll click OK. I'll click OK, close. I'll say show icon for notification. Then I'll click close. So my network adapter on my computer now will now be having a static manual configured what? IP address. Are we together? OK. It was having a static IP address. Somehow, I think my host computer system 
I took my host computer system, it's currently connected to uh, my wireless. It's currently connected to a wireless network. So I think that's why it got an IP address. Huh? Huh? Are we together? Okay. Yeah, so I will need to disable my wireless as well uh, in order for me to proceed. Okay, the next step I want to do is to install the role of the DACP server, have it configured, and use it for deployment. But in the meantime, uh, let me uh, go and turn off my Wi-Fi. I've turned off my Wi-Fi, so only my network, uh, my network point is currently working, which is my the cable which is connected to the switch, which is also having an IP address from um, from our people. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to my manage my server now. Then I'm going to click add and remove rows because they actually come like a row. So I'll click on add and remove row. I'll click next. So it's going to just detect my local network card. You know, just prerequisites to check whether my server is okay to be actually install a row. Actually, the rows I want to install is DNS server and DSCP server. Uh, excuse me? No, no, you select one at a time. But I think in, um, in server 2008, you can actually just select multiple rows and install them as you go. So I'll first of all install the DNS. So I'll click DNS server. I'll click next. I'll click next. Uh, most of the time, especially with server 2003, it will sometimes demand you to always restart whenever you, whenever you are installing. I'll click next again. Now, it said, do you want to create a forward lookup zone? A forward lookup zone is a zone where it uses name to IP. Are we together? So, of course, it's recommended for small networks. So, I'll click that forward lookup zone. Um, I want to maintain the zone on the server, not the ISP. If I want the ISP to maintain the zone, meaning I'll only just be reading, the ISP will be writing. So, I'll just take the first one. I'll give it uh, my, I'll just take, call it MCT. That's the name. You can call it any name. I'll click next. So it becomes, it creates an empty. So this is like a DNS server you're trying to set up now. Okay, this is different from a domain name. This is just a DNS zone where you keep all your records. So I'll click next. Um, do not allow dynamic update. Dynamic updates, of course, are those of you doing servers, dynamic update is whereby clients get to update their own record. Of course, that is not advisable, right? Imagine people updating their own record and you, you go to a sex website, you update a record that, is, that talks about sex, and a user is going to that same IP address. Most of you have experienced that before. You're actually going to a particular IP address or a website and it's directing you to something else. It is because the, the DNS record has been messed up. So most companies don't allow dynamic updates, but they will only allow if the server is actually what? Secured. Are we together? If the, there's a security on that particular computer, then they will allow because whatever the users are using, they are actually directed by the server. So by this case, I won't allow. I'll click next. Um, yes, for, forward to my IP address. Now, in some scenarios, some companies have a different IP address that does their name resolution. That's what they call forwarders. Now, currently, my computer is a local computer. Is that not correct? But I want to make sure that whenever anybody sends a query, google.com, instead of my IP to respond, I have another server which is uh, being used by telecom, uh, sorry, Leo or MTC. So I will assign that IP address to my client's computer so that whenever they say Google, instead of my server to respond, that server then responds to them. But then I would need to specify that IP address here. Are we together? Okay, so I'll click um, no, just uh, do not forward queries. I'll click next. Now, root hints. What it's doing now is trying to search for root hints. Root hints comes by default on your server. Um, every server that gets installed uh, comes default by, with, the, with its own root hints. So these root hints, they are installed by default by Microsoft. So that if you don't have a forwarder, of course your computer does not know how to get to Google. So it will use these root hints to locate Google. Are we together? They are default. It's like, it's just a, a database. Microsoft installed by default on your server. So since your server cannot go to Google, your server will not talk to the routines. 
And since the routines are public servers on the internet, they know how to get to Google. So I'll click finish. Um, it's okay. Just click finish. Okay, DNS is set up now. The next thing we want to do now is to add the DHCP server. So we'll go back again. We click on add and remove roles. We click next. And we say DHCP server. So we'll click next again. We click next. And well, we're trying to configure the DHCP server now. Click next. Um, do you guys remember I talked about scopes? Do you guys remember scopes? Remember, scope is a range of an IP address, right? So what is asking us now is to give it a scope name. So we're going to say scope one. I'll click next. Remember, the scope is a range of an IP address, right? So I'm going to start a range. I'm going to say 192.168.1.1. .1. So, 192.168.1.5, or let me put 10. Huh? Now, how many IP addresses do I have? How many IP address do I have now to be listed? I have only nine, right? Because I've statically assigned one already, right? But you see, the DHCP server does not understand that. There's a tendency that if I do not do something to one, there's a likelihood that DHCP might tend to assign dot one to somebody else. So who can tell me, what do I have to do? I have to do what? I have to exclude. Is that not correct? Remember, we have exclusion. Is that not correct? So let's go next. Correct, because you, you were not listening. What I'm saying, my scope are valuable to be listed now is 10 IP address, which is, which is from one to 10. But I said I only have nine because I've already assigned one to the server system. Now, but there's a tendency that DSCP only works with automatic. He does not have any idea that one is already on the server. So it might issue dot one to somebody else. There will be conflict on the network. Then I ask a question. What do you think I'm supposed to do in order for me to prevent DSCP server from issuing a computer dot one? Then we said we need to add what we call what? Exclusion. Remember, exclusion is taking out a range from DACP assignment. So when you click next now, you actually get that menu. So what am I going to type? I'm going to type 192.168.1.1. Tab 192.168.1. If I say dot five, meaning DACP will start assigning IP address from, from dot what? Dot six. Are we? Are we following? That is that. These are the configuration you do as a D, as a server administrator. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to only put one because it's only one IP address I want to reserve. But in a real world scenario, you'll not be talking about ten IP addresses. You're talking about probably two hundred or five hundred. So you probably want to exclude up to about twenty IP address, especially if you have printers, scanners, servers, and that need static assignments. So I'm going to click add. Now, this IP address will be excluded from where? From the DACP assignment. So I'll click next. Remember your list duration. So I can come here and can change it, but currently I'm taking the default, which is eight days, which is your normal working days, right? Because your normal, work, your normal weekdays is seven. Eight is not day number ten, uh, Monday. So when you come on Monday, you have 100% time to be able to renew your IP address because then your computer is working. Is that not correct? That's why you have the default eight days. Because it's logical. So you, can you can send it to a month. It depends on you. But this is, um, this is just um, best practice. So that um, in case, because if you send it a month and somebody did not use his computer or 500 computers have connected and they are all out, then you are, you're doomed. Because then people will not be able to connect. So we'll click next. Do I want to configure it now? Now remember, apart from DHCP configuration, Remember, we also have DSCP option, where you have gateway, DNS, wind server. Remember, those informations are distributed by DSCP. Is that not correct? Now, that is what we want to configure now. But if, if per adventure you do not know it, you can take the second option. I will configure later. But of course, we have the informations, right? So I'll just take 
the first option. I'll click next. Our default gateway, actually, like we said, we don't have a router, right? We don't have an ISP, so I'm going to skip that. So I'll skip it. But I think we do have a DNS. Is that not correct? Okay, so think about this. We don't actually have a domain, but actually we have a DNS server, which we gave it an IP. Our server has an IP address, and the DNS server resides in that server system. So automatically, the IP address of this server is actually the IP address of the DSCP server. Is that not correct? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type 192.168.1.1. If I click Add, automatically it resolves it. Are we together? Huh? It will resolve it. So I'll click Next. I don't have a Win server, which is used for older operating system. Do you want to activate the scope now? Yes. I'll click Yes, and I'll click on Finish. I'll click Finish. So now I can minimize this, go to Start menu. I'll go to Administrator, Administrative Tools. You will see DSCP. I'll click on that now. Then I'll expand it, expand my scope. OK. Now it's time for people to start getting IP addresses. Are we together? OK. So those of you who have your computers connected on the switch, can you please try to Disconnect your network, try to connect again, and try to see if you can get an IP address. You can, I can start with my, my section. Trevor, you can ask your guys, disconnect your network, try to connect again, so that your computer can try to look for a DACP server. Yeah. Just disconnect your cable, then connect your cable again. Your host computer, don't your, not your virtual machine. Leave your virtual machine for now. So let me go to my own private computer system. Uh, let me go to my network. Uh, go to my network interface. Okay. I have, that's my interface. It's using a self IP address. So, will you do so it also do the same? Yeah, yeah. On your host computer, see if your DSCP server can also assign. Yeah, so I'm just going to disconnect my cable, not my computer. I'm going to connect my cable again. Try yeah, yeah, disconnect your cable because you, you, your computer will try to look for a DSCP server to get an IP address. Uh, please take note, your virtual machines, your virtual machine must be a bridge adapter. Uh, make sure you check that. Uh, go to your options, your settings on your virtual machine. Make sure the adapter is uh, bridged. Go to network. Okay, mine is not, so I'll put it on bridge. Uh, okay, I'm bridging with this. So make sure your network adapter is bridged. Toivo, make sure you do what I've just done. Make sure your virtual machine network adapter is bridged. You go to machine, settings. You come to network. On the option attached to it will be by default NAT. Select it and say bridged adapter. Yeah, you see attach to, then you select bridge adapter. Guys, Lovisa is on my computer. Can you see her? Yes. Have I given her an IP address? Exactly. You see her computer. Her computer is on my screen, right? Yes. And even my MacBook Pro is also there. If I go back to my MacBook now, and I go to my network, if I come to my, you can see the IP address. It's assigned already. Lovisa, do you have an IP address? Automatically. Automatically, because I'm running a DHCP server here. Those of you who have wireless, you can connect to Network Plus 2. You will see that I will give you IP address as well. Connect to Network Plus 2. Network Plus 2, is it not the wireless of your host computer you have to use? Yeah. 
Lovisa, do you have IP address? Yes. Of course. So those guys are supposed to show the on my PC. Exactly, like the way I'm sh you you're seeing everybody showing now. Esther, I can see you. Have you connected to Network Plus 2? Yeah. Uh huh. Esther, you can see all of you. Uh huh. So I'm connected to No, don't connect. Let me come to your computer. I think I'll, I think that's all. Let me just stop the video.